Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 14 Developer Beta 7. This is available to all iOS 14 supported devices, and if you're wondering where Public Beta 7 is, or iOS 14 Public Beta 7, expect that either by the time you're watching this video, maybe a little bit later, or tomorrow at the latest. Apple's been pretty good about getting these out on time. Now, this particular update was released alongside with iPad OS 14 Beta 7, Mac OS Big Sur Beta 6, TV OS 14 beta seven. And the other day they released watch OS seven beta seven. So the public beta four version of watch OS seven should also be out. It's getting kind of confusing. There's also an update for home pod as well. If you're on iOS 14 betas with that. Now, everything in this particular update is fairly small. We'll talk about that in a moment. And also toward the end of the video, we'll talk about when to expect iOS 14 beta eight, as well as the iOS 14 public release date and maybe an Apple event this coming week. So look for that at the end of the video. Now this particular update came in at 427.4 megabytes on my iPhone 11 pro max, and it was about 400 megabytes on all the devices you see here. I have the 2020 iPad pro 12.9 iPhone 6s plus iPhone 11, as well as iOS 14 beta six running on the iPhone 10 R. Now let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. The build number is 18 a five, three, six, nine B. So B means we're very close to a final version. Usually we'll get to an a, and then finally iOS 14 GM or golden master. So based on that, I would expect eight betas at this point and then a GM and then a public release. And again, I'll talk about when to expect that later on. Now there's no modem update in this particular update. So don't look for anything there. If you were having connectivity issues with your iPhone, well, there shouldn't be any difference there. So don't expect anything there. But one thing I noticed right away is this beta is super smooth. So nice and smooth using it. We'll talk about benchmark scores in a little bit, but the first change has to do with wallpapers and they've updated it on all the devices, which is really nice. So if we go into settings and then we go to wallpaper, go to choose new wallpaper, under here, you'll see that we have stills and live. If we go under stills, we now have light and dark modes for just about every wallpaper, not some of the really old ones, but the new or the rainbow striped ones, there's light and dark. Also the live wallpapers, as you can see. So you should see those updated. There is no new wallpaper picker. Maybe we'll see that closer to the final release. A lot of people said that Apple redesigned it, but we still haven't seen that change yet. Now, Apple also updated the app library with different names. So we have productivity and finance. We also have information and reading, then shopping and food, health and fitness. Some of these have been there before, but they keep changing them. I imagine they'll change some more before they're finally released. So maybe we'll see them change it. Maybe we won't, but they have been updated. Now there's a slight change in music. So on the iPhone 10 R here, I have beta six. So on the right, I have iOS 14 beta seven. So let's go into music and we'll go into a song and they're different songs, but it doesn't really make a difference. If we go into the options, you'll see that they've changed this around again. So on the right, you've got copy, share, show album. And on the left, you have copy and share. Now, the interesting thing is depending on the device you're using, I'm actually seeing this differently. So here on the iPhone 11 running beta seven, you'll see it's organized differently again. So these may be dynamic the way they arrange themselves. You'll see here, but it's kind of interesting that they're arranged that way. So they may be dynamic at this point, but it's just a small change that I noticed. Now, if we go into settings, actually, let me use the iPhone 11 since I have it installed on that. If we go into settings and then we go to the main setting screen, you'll see exposure notifications. Now they haven't made any huge changes, but if you have an app that's actually turned on to use this, you now can turn on the option for a monthly update of whether or not you'll receive a notification that reminds you that the feature is functioning and possible exposures are being shared with your authorized public health and authority app. Now you need an app installed for this to work. So it's not on by default. And of course you can always turn it off if you want to, you just uninstall the app. And in this case, if you want to try that out, you'll see it here. So just install that. It's only for Virginia, depending on the state you're in, it makes a difference. But if you want to see what that looks like, you can do that. Now, some people, when they open news for the first time are seeing a new splash screen, we'll wait for it to load. I'm not seeing it. I don't see a new splash screen here, but some people are seeing it. It may be a little bit different for you, but I'm not seeing that, but let me know if you see that in the comments below. Now, also when it comes to email, send is a little bit different. They've changed it back to how it was before. So if we go into our email, this is actually spike email. I've been trying out. Let's go into our normal email app. 
You'll see on a previous version on the left here, it's highlighted in blue as far as the sender goes. On the new version, they got rid of that again. So I'm not sure why they keep changing this around, but they are changing it. So it's, it doesn't really make too much of a difference. And a lot of people may not be using that app to begin with. Now, Apple has mentioned something new with their privacy policy, but they haven't actually shown us what it looks like yet, at least live on iOS 14. So for example, if we go into the app store and then maybe select an application like this one, super Mario run, and then scroll down, we'd actually have a nutrition card similar to what we have on food in the United States. Anyway, that gives us what information is actually being collected. Apple wrote a little article about this. I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out, but basically it just gives us an overall view of everything that the app is collecting. Also today, there was some news that Apple is going to delay its iOS 14 privacy policy that strictly restricts any information that's given to them until earlier next year. I think this was at the request of Facebook and other applications that say it will really harm their businesses. Apple's going to implement those later. They're just giving more time to implement it throughout the OS. So it's nice to see them really pushing privacy, but they're actually delaying that part. Now with this particular update, there's still 21 known issues that remain. So there are issues and Apple is aware of it. And of course, if you have additional issues, be sure to report it in the feedback app. However, they've resolved six issues. Some of them you'll be familiar with others have to do with developers, but the first thing they've resolved is the AirPods error message. So if I take my AirPods pro let's connect one, I'll just put one in my ear to connect it. And let's see what happens. You'll see it says Aaron's AirPods Pro connected. So the naming has been updated, so it's correct now. So it's good to see that they've actually fixed that. And it was a bug for everyone on beta six, so it's fixed in beta seven. Also, they've brought back significant locations in privacy. So if we go into our settings, then privacy, then location services, scroll all the way to the bottom, go to system services, scroll down, and you'll see significant locations. This has been brought back. It wasn't there in the previous beta. So you should be seeing this now if you weren't before. Now there's a couple other things they've fixed on the iPad. Now with the iPad, they haven't really brought any new features other than what I've mentioned already, but let's go ahead and maybe add a new widget and we'll add the weather widget here. We'll just bring this over and the weather widget should no longer be requesting access to your location constantly. So that's one bug that's been fixed and it should also report the correct location now. So where it was giving a bug before it should be fixed. Other than that, there's no new changes to the iPad specifically, but you should have all the fixes and everything implemented that you have on iOS 14 beta seven on iPhone. Now, as far as battery life on iOS 14 beta seven, let's go to the settings. We'll go down to battery battery health. I have 96% and don't worry if you're updating this updates do not affect battery health. It just simply rechecks the physical condition of the battery. Take a look at the last 10 days and you'll see, I haven't used it a ton, but let's go to a day that was a little over 50% usage, four hours and 24 minutes of screen on time, six hours and one minute of screen off time. So if I doubled that or got close to it, I'm still getting about eight to nine hours of screen on time, which isn't great, but I have so much screen off time playing music and things like that. It's going to affect it overall. So it's not too much of a concern for me. However, with beta seven, it will take a few days to measure this. So hopefully it gets a little bit better. Like I said earlier, performance seems to be pretty good. Even on older devices, such as the iPhone 6s plus, you'll see that it actually performs really well. Like I said, everything seems to be much smoother in this particular update. So we'll wait for the music to load. This is the first time I opened it so I could show you a real real world experience in this one. So we're just scrolling through. It works. Okay. If we go over, let's go into news. Maybe you'll see that it loads nice and fast. And for an older device, I wouldn't worry about this being slowed down or anything. It seems to be doing really well. Now, as far as the overall Geekbench performance, well, I ran Geekbench on all of these devices so you could take a look at it. So let's take a look. We'll go into Geekbench 5 and on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. Now keep in mind, I ran this right after installing iOS 14 beta seven, but I scored 1,326 for single core, 3,420 for multi-core on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Each device is going to be a little bit different, but let's take a look here. And here you can see all the different devices. My iPad Pro on the left, the iPhone 6S Plus, then the iPhone 11, and then the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And your devices, going from the oldest to the newest should be somewhere in between this. As long as you're getting similar scores on your device, you should be good to go. And like I said, this has been really smooth for me.
Now, should you install iOS 14 beta 7? Well, if you're on beta 6, I would say absolutely. As we get closer to a final release date, it's going to be more and more refined. And as a beta tester, you want to use it and report feedback so that Apple can finish making it really solid for everyone else. So again, just report feedback. They put it in the other category before, but I just go into my app library, scroll down to F, go to feedback, report the feedback, and you're good to go. And Apple prioritizes it based on importance. So if they have major crashes and things, of course, they're going to fix that first. Now, of course, I'll do a follow-up later this weekend. I normally release those on Sunday, so be sure to check that out along with the iOS 13.7 follow-up. I'll do a poll in a couple days as well. So hopefully we have good results with iOS 14 beta 7. Now that's it for iOS 14 beta 7. Of course, if I find anything more, I'll let you know in a different video later in the week. And Apple is probably on a weekly schedule like they have been already. Now iOS 13.7 kind of changed the scheduling a little bit, but I would expect iOS 14 beta 8 as early as Tuesday next week or maybe later in the week. But again, Apple can change this at any time. Now, as far as an Apple event, well, a lot of people are looking forward to the final version of iOS 14. There's been some information saying we'll have an Apple event as soon as this coming week. So maybe Tuesday or so we'll see something and then a final release of iOS 14 later in September or maybe October since iOS 14 beta one was a little bit late this year. Now that's really it for this particular beta. And of course, I'll keep you updated as I know more. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.